across the town of Avon. God loves the people of Odin. And he's always sending messengers to come and tell you that. God loves the people of Odin. He really does. That's very good. God's got nothing but love for you. Even when you don't feel it. Even when it seems highly unlikely. You're still above ground. You're able to go to work. Go back to your loved ones. Enjoy your family and, and you're still above ground. God loves you. The love that God has for you sent Jesus Christ. Jesus is the love of God personified in person. Jesus Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but all it means that everything that God is is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. flesh, bones and blood and came down as a person to relate to people. Because God is God. But God became a man for you. God became a man for you. You know in relationships, you get people, especially the ladies, complaining all the time. Why can't you just change just for me? Why can't you just be like this for me? God did. God became a man for you. He became a man for you. In all his glory and all his power, and all his holiness after the fall there is no way a person can come face to face with God and leave the guilt of sin would be so much you would literally die with the guilt of sin standing before God you would collapse and die so that's why God sent Jesus that's why God put on flesh bones and blood and that's why the word of God Jesus Christ put aside his glory him down as a man for you. And I get it all the time. You hear it all the time. Why can't you just change for me? You're right. <laughs> you okay? You hear it all the time. In counseling sessions and intervention sessions. Well, I left him because he couldn't 
become this for me. I wanted it to be like that for me. But God did for did it for you. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Jesus didn't begin to exist at the immaculate conception. Jesus existed in eternity. Before the world existed, Jesus Christ has always been. And I know that buffers quite a few people. But Jesus Christ spoke for himself. He doesn't need anybody speaking for himself as far as who he is is concerned. Jesus can speak for himself and he did. At one point they were going to stone Jesus Christ because he said that before Abraham lived, he lived. And they were going to pick up stones to stone him for saying that. Jesus existed in eternity. They picked up stones and they were going to stone Jesus for something he said. Jesus actually claimed that before Abraham existed, he himself, Jesus, existed. You know, because he had said that the temple in Jerusalem, or the temple of his body, he could destroy and rebuild it in three days. He was referring to his resurrection. But the Jews misunderstood that he was talking about the temple in Jerusalem. So they say to Jesus, 30 and 6 years it has been in the building of his temple and you think you can build it in three days? You know, and the conversation is going on. You know, and they mention Abraham and Jesus say to them before Abraham was I am which is to say that before Abraham existed Jesus Christ was already there is from eternity to eternity they picked up stones to stone him for that so it's a misconception misconception to think that Jesus Christ began with the Immaculate Conception with Mary. No, Jesus has always been there. He's called the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the second person in the Godhead. He's always been there. He's from eternity to eternity. And you see, one thing that tells you that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God is the fact that he was able to announce his birth before he was born. Jesus was speaking from eternity, telling the prophets for a period of 4,000 years. And you have at least 350 prophecies regarding the life of Jesus Christ on earth. And this one person fulfilled 350 prophecies in a space of 33 years. Now, if you're a mathematician and you like your mathematics, go and do probability on that one. It will tell you without a shadow of doubt that Jesus is indeed the Son of the Living God. 
to tell you that. Thank you, brother. 350 prophecies fulfilled by one man over 33 years in detail. That tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. It tells you that. So Jesus is from eternity. Before the world was created, Jesus Christ has always been there. And if you read in the book of Colossians, Colossians really tells you who Jesus is. It tells you that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. It says that Jesus, by him were all things created. Visible and invisible things were created by Jesus Christ. Thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, everything was created by Jesus. For Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one who is at the center of creation. I'm not talking about just the universe. I'm talking about creation. Jesus is at the center of creation because the word of God tells us that all things were made for him and all things were made by him. So Jesus Christ is at the center of creation. This is why life doesn't make any sense at all if Jesus is not at the center of it. This is why the questions like who am I and what am I doing here? It doesn't make any sense at all if Jesus Christ is not at the center of it. And I know that as people we have a lot of questions and when that's fine we have a lot of life questions. But the answer to the life questions is Jesus Christ because you were made in the image of God. When God made you, we made you in his image after his likeness and because God rules in heaven, God gave you rulership on the earth. You were made in the image of God. You were made in his image, you were made after his likeness, and because God reigns in heaven, God gave you to reign over the earth. Because you are made in the image and the likeness of God. So you see, when we put anything else at the center of our lives, it doesn't make any sense. The reason why people are depressed today, and I know this is going to baffle you, but the reason why there's things like depression, the reason why there's things like anxiety attacks, the reason why there's things like suicide, the reason why they self harm, violence, aggression, and all of those things is because we have removed Christ Jesus from being the center of our lives. And there was a time when Jesus Christ was in the center of the Great Britain as well. You and I both know that if there's any nation that has ever produced Preachers, evangelists, missionaries, and theologians. If there's ever a nation that has made an impact with the gospel, is this here nation, Great Britain. There was a time when Jesus Christ was at the center of Great Britain. And you can look around and see it for yourself. See how many church buildings are in this nation. We see the church buildings, but we don't just see the church people. Because there was a time when this nation had Jesus Christ at the center of the nation. And this nation was held together by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what made Britain great? God made Britain great because Britain made the gospel great. Doesn't that surprise you that the moment or with the generations that came and tried their very best to do away with the gospel of Jesus Christ in this nation, the nation begins to crumble. There is a correlation between the two. 
because Jesus Christ was at the center of the nation, the nation was held together. The nation commanded respect. The nation was called Great Britain. But the moment the nation decided to remove Jesus from the center of the nation, bad things began to happen. Praise the Lord. Whenever you remove Jesus Christ from being the center of your life, that inner peace evades you. The moment Jesus Christ is removed from being the center of a family, it doesn't matter how much money comes into the family, true joy and happiness evades that family. Whenever Jesus Christ is removed from being the center of communities and society, it begins to crumble. Why do you think that one in seven kids in the UK are walking with a knife? And this is according to, st to the stats. One in seven kids walking about with a blade. What is it the kids walking with a knife? You know why that is? Because the nation has removed Jesus Christ, the Prince of Life, the Source of Life, from being at the center of family life, of community, and of families. Our values and our beliefs are trying the best to get rid of Jesus Christ as the center of the nation. And yet, when you look at the history of this nation, Great Britain was made great because it made the gospel great. That's how this nation became powerful. That's how this nation expanded this empire to horizons unimaginable. It was because of the blessing of Jesus. It was because of the blessing of Abraham. But now that we've eaten, and now that we are full, and now that we have the material gifts that comes with having a relationship with the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we now have decided as a nation to remove Jesus from the center of the nation. This is why bad things happen to the nation. We don't even want to get into teen pregnancies. We don't even want to get into violence and crime. We don't even want to get into prejudice and racism. And all those cancers that are plaguing this nation. You and I know that when Jesus Christ was at the center of the nation, the nation was running smoothly. But look at the nation today. Look at the spiritual condition of Britain today. I said we see the church buildings, but we don't see the church people. Look at the spiritual condition of Britain today. Churches are built, church buildings are being sold. They are being turned into pubs. Look at the spiritual condition of Britain today. The reason why this nation was became great is not because the nation has smart or intelligent people, because believe you me, other countries of people that are even more intelligent. It is not because this country has a lot of natural resources, it because believe you me, there are other countries out there with vast amounts of natural resources. The reason why Britain was made great is because Britain made the gospel great. You know when two people come together in marriage and they share everything 
and the woman has everything that she wants to have. She has the cars, the houses, she has everything she needs. So now that she has everything she needs, she decides she's not in love with the man anymore. So what does she do? She kicks the man out of the house. Because she's got everything she needed. She's got everything she needs now. Oh, she's satisfied now. The bank account is bursting now. So it's time to get rid of the man. She's got the cars in the garage now. So it's time to get rid of the man. The seven bedroom house that she wanted. She's got it now. So it's time to get rid of the man. All the businesses that she wanted, she's got the businesses now. And now that she's got the businesses, she's got everything that she wanted from this man, she decides it's now time to get rid of the man. That's exactly what this nation has done. The blessings that are in this nation are because this nation had a marriage covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. But now the nation has had its economy. They've decided to get rid of the one that gave the economy. Now that this nation has had all the things that it wanted and needed, respect in-house and abroad, all of that, the nation has now decided to get rid of the one person who made this nation great. The nation was made great because of its advancement of the gospel. There is no doubt about that. You look at the amount of missionary preachers, evangelists, you look at the amount of work that this nation has done as, concern, as, as far as the preaching of the gospel is concerned. There is no nation on earth that has preached the gospel than this here tiny island, than this here tiny nation called 